Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to do an old fashioned makeup toot. On this look, I wanted to create something a little bit more festive, a little bit more kind of full on glam than I have done lately. I was looking through my uploads and apart from vlogs, loads of the makeup I've been doing recently is a little bit more kind of toned down, a little bit laid back. I think there was like a tutorial called the red carpet look. Even that for me was pretty like dialed back. Dialed back? Dialed back? Dial? Dialed? It was, yeah, you know what I mean. I just wanted to create something fun and sparkly and a little bit grungy and a little bit cool. If you'd like to see how I created this look, then please stay tuned. Hello! Okay, so I've done part of this eye already just because I wanted to know roughly what I was going to end up doing. And the first thing I'm going to do is get my shape tape from Tarte. And this is the shade medium. I'm a little bit paler than I usually am. So I'm just going to use this. People ask me a lot about Lane Low Paint Pot from MAC. I still absolutely love it. I just ran out and I cannot remember the last time I was near a MAC store. So hopefully I'll get it again. I do miss it. It is my all time fave. Lane Low forever. So I'm just going to pop that base on all over like normal. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Kat Von D Lock It Powder in the shade Light. I really like this, I've been using it pretty much, actually yeah I have been using it every single day since I got it and I really like it. I think my under eyes and my lids does not move. So once that's all powdered down, we're going to go into a palette. And this is the Huda Beauty Desert Dusk Palette. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I actually really, really do. I think it's beautiful. I actually haven't used my own one that much, but I borrowed my friend's when I went away and I lost all my makeup. My friend Amy had it. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's so nice. So I'm going to use this. First colour I'm going to go in with is Desert Sands, which is this light one right here. And I'm just going to do a little all over. Make sure everything's super powdered down. And then the colour I'm actually going to use for my transition shade is down here. It's called blazing and I'm going to use my Smith 232 brush for this. The way that I blended this is in really small circular motions rather than window wiper movements. I'm just going to go straight on and then just circular circular my brush. We're zoom in a little bit. So I'm just going to use really small circular movements to start blending. Um, I've been watching a whole bunch of YouTube this morning. Whenever I feel a bit stuck or, I don't know, like, maybe a little bit unmotivated, is that a word? I literally just sit and I'll watch YouTube for a little while and see see what sparks my interest. But I was watching a video by Nikki Tutorials and she did this technique that she learned off Mitchell, who is an amazing makeup artist from down in Manchester, I think, but he is actually doing my makeup next week. I'm absolutely buzzing. He is such a talented makeup artist and she got this little tip from him, so I'm trying it out. And it's literally just like you place your brush down and you use really small circular movements, little baby movements, and it just starts the blend. And I tried it on this eye and I think that that is pretty stunning, okay? I think it's beautiful, it worked really, really well. I think this kind of technique would work really well with colour as well, so you never know, maybe I'll throw out a blue smoky eye next week. <laughs> So I'm just placing my brush down and using really small circular movements. I'll do my usual window wiper just to bring that into the inner corner. I think that's really pretty and obviously this palette, I think the pigments are gorgeous. Really, really nice. Obviously it is just another warm palette but it's beautiful. I'm going to swap over my brush to a 230 brush which is a little bit smaller and the colour I'm going to go in with is Saffron which is down here. And I'm going to do the exact same thing, but I'm going to bring it onto the lid a little bit and then I'm going to start to get right in that crease. And I'm just using the same little baby circular movements. And then I like to go back in with my fluffy brush and blaze in and I do actually, I still like to do my little blend with my brush like normal. Okay, I need to bring that into the inner corner a bit. It's crazy how using your brush in a different way does really change the way the makeup goes on. I'm really, really light on my lid there. I'm using hardly any pressure at all. Now I'm going to go in with the shade Oud and I'm going to go just on the very outer corner of my eye. And I'm just going to start building up that dark. I think this is the first moment I thought eh, about the palette because I think that colour could be more pigmented but to be fair I have built a lot of colour up already maybe it's just not sticking 
That trick though, it seems to work really well. I think maybe it's the circular motions just buff that product right in, which makes it, I don't know, more intense. For the lid, I'm gonna take my NYX Glitter Primer. I absolutely love this stuff, use it all the time. And I'm gonna go on top of that with this shade here, Cosmo. This is like a pressed glitter. Really impressed by that pressed glitter in the palette because it actually hasn't made a mess yet. But I'm gonna take my MAC 239 brush, which is just a nice flat brush, and I'm gonna apply that all over to the naked part of my lid, which is just here. So I'm applying that straight on the lid. I'm using my dabbing motions just to start feathering that out. And then with the wet part of the brush, I'm gonna go straight into Cosmo, and that way it picks up loads of the product, and then you just go straight on top of the lid with that and because the brush is still a little bit sticky the most of the glitter sticks to the brush and then you've got a little bit of play time and you don't get as much fallout as well i'm just sticking that on so that itself is a really really pretty kind of pinky sunsetty glitter but to give it a little bit more dimension and kind of change up the tone a little bit i'm going to use my urban decay heavy metal glitter this one is in Midnight Cowboy, it's my all time favourite. It's always sold out, but I absolutely love it. And I'm just gonna go straight on top of the glitter with this. And then because that itself is a little bit wet, what you can do is you can use your brush and kind of pat that in and move it around a little bit to really mix with the other glitter. And then once that dries, it is pretty sturdy. You can see I did this one a little bit before just to kind of test out how it was gonna look. And it is pretty sturdy. Something else I quite like to do is to layer up powder and glitters. So I'm going to use a little bit of the Nefertiti. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Nefertiti and Celestial on the same brush. And I'm just going to kind of slightly layer that up. And then you can go back in with a little bit of the Cosmo glitter from the palette. Now that that's on, I can see that this side's not quite dark enough. So I'm just going to build that up a little bit more. And then before I do my eyebrows, I'm going to go in with my Laura Geller Gilded Honey. Been really liking this highlighter lately. Really much. This is just a little blank canvas cosmetics E08 brush. Just a really, really small kind of smudger brush. And I'm going to place this highlight underneath my brow and in my inner corner. Now I am going to jump off camera and finish off my eyebrows. And then we'll be back to finish off the eyeballs. So I went to go and do my eyebrows and realised that I hate doing my eyebrows before my foundation now. So we're not going to do that. So we're stopping at this stage, which is pretty crazy. I'm going to zoom you back in a wee bit. So I'm just stopping at this stage just now so we can do foundation because I actually prefer doing my eyebrows after foundation just because I feel like I can get them much sharper. I don't need to worry about carving them out. It takes less time. So for skin. First thing we're going to do is spray our face. This is the U Tan and Tone Coconut Tanning Water. This is my favourite thing from U Tan. Basically what it is, it smells like coconuts. It's a really refreshing spray that's got tan in it. So basically it keeps your skin looking sun-kissed. Basically that's what I really struggle with in the winter especially. If my skin is pale, I end up looking just sick. So that helps me keep a nice glow about my skin. The next thing I'm gonna use is my all-time fave. This is the Neode Photography Fluid Opacity 12%, which I have now learned that opacity is like opaqueness. So it's 12%, which is 12% solid colour. But you guys know I love this. I love using this underneath my foundation. I just think it makes me look really glowy, really healthy. Photography, it looks sick. And I do actually think it helps my foundation stay on that little bit longer, but that might be a placebo to the fact that I just love it and I think it could probably cure world, world hunger. You know, I just got faith in the product. That glow in your skin, it's just stunning. Excuse the little breakouts I've got, we're healing, we are healing at the moment. I hate to say it, but I think the Huda Beauty Foundation has got a couple of ingredients in it that really just did not agree with my skin. Doesn't mean that I'll never use it again, I probably will on a one-off if I have like an event or something, but for everyday use, it's a definite no-no from me. The moisturizer I'm gonna use is the CEO from Sunday Riley. This is a new product to me, but I've been using it maybe like for a week now. Oh, it smells like oranges, it's beautiful, it's really good for, see if you live in like a really busy city, 
It's got loads of vitamin C in it and it's it's a protect and repair moisturiser. So it's vitamin C and E antioxidant, which is really good if you live in a really polluted place. It's good for protecting your skin from the pollutants in the air. It's good for for repairing your skin. It's good for glowing and brightening and smoothing. It does feel quite tacky on my skin, but I like that. I actually like a, a, a moisturizer I can feel. Oh, see that? I just think my skin looks 10 times more healthy. So the foundation we're gonna use today is the IT Cosmetics CC Plus Cream. I absolutely love this. This is in the shade Medium. I've not used it in ages. I'm gonna take two pumps in the back of my hand and I'm gonna go and wet my sponge. We are, we are wet. Look at the size of this thing, it looks absolutely massive. Excuse, there is foundation on it, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so we're gonna put this on. I'm gonna dot it on first. I thought I spilled that on me. But I used to use this all the time and then the only, the only thing made me stop using it is it has pretty bad flashback. I felt like no matter how much powder or bronzer I used on top of it, in any flash photography, my face is just white as anything. This, for me, is a really good everyday thing because it's also got SPF 50 in it. That was great. So I'm just going to blend that in. But if you guys remember, I was like obsessed with this. See for just day to day wear, it's just so beautiful. Really good coverage, but it's not crazy. Like I think it just looks like my skin, but better. Actually, does it say that on the tube? Yes, that's the tagline, your skin but better. And then for our coverage and for hiding sins, we're gonna use the Tarte Shape Tape. I'm gonna cover up my poor little forehead. Get a little bit extra coverage on the nose area, top lip, and then we'll go under our eyes as well. And that is actually going to help us tidy up the eye look somewhat. Ah, oh, I love this. So this is actually called the Velvet Sponge and it's by LC Cosmetics and I absolutely love it because see this long point. It's so good for like getting right in the eye, tidying up the makeup. Maybe I'll try that cutting thing with powder to do with this. See what I mean? Woohoo! I look good! What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my Kat Von D powder from earlier and this is a new Smith brush. This is the Smith 133 brush. Apply this powder under my eye and then I'm going to put it a little bit on my smile lines. Chin and then just in between my eyebrows. I'm actually going to pat it on. I don't really want to move any coverage. Now what we're going to do is we're going to finish off our eyeballs. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to finish my eyes off. There's a certain way that I like to do my under eyes. You might not like it, you might bloody love it. And what we're going to do is we're going to go in with blazing first, which is just here, this beautiful orange tone. And we're just going to run that under our eyes. And by that, I mean I literally just get my brush. Wha bam! It's, it looks mental, but give me, give me faith. Okay, we're starting to look much more complete. Now I'm gonna take this Smith 253 brush and a little bit of this saffron color here and I'm gonna use the side of that brush just to stamp that red color right in at my lash line. Now I've got some lashes here, I wore them yesterday. These are the Lily Lashes in the Style Can. These are one of my favorites. Loads of you guys ask me every day what lashes am I wearing and I can almost guarantee the three styles of eyelashes I wear, they're all from Lily Lashes, they are in the styles Miami, Mikonos and Can. Those are the three styles of lashes I like. Can are much more kind of fluttery and natural. Mykonos are really quite dense and shorter and thicker and then Miami are probably the most like extravagant of the three. Miami are really, really swoopy. They're long, but they're fluttery. I think Miami are probably my favorite, but I like the can a lot as well. And then Mykonos are good for like really like dramatic lashes. But those are the three styles of lashes I wear all the time. Honestly, that's probably why some of you might find that my looks look 
looks quite similar. It's because I wear the same lashes every day. Every day. I love them. Mascara I'm going to use is Gifted from Tarte. I've spoken about this in a couple of videos now. This is the only mascara that lasted a full personal training session. Did not come off my face. It does not crumble down your face. I think it's my favourite mascara at the moment. And I've just got my lashes glued up and waiting to dry. So I'm going to pop some coats of this on. I really like this eye look. I think it's so pretty. And this mascara is so amazing for bottom eyelashes. It takes a little while, you kind of have to wait for the first coat to dry and then the second coat, blah blah blah. But see if you build it up, you can get them so thick and long and chunky. I just bloody love it. Excuse that this brow is darker than this one, I really need to go and fix that ASAP. Okay, let's get these lashes on. Oh, I love it. Okay, so now my eyes are finished. I'm going to go off camera and do my brows and I'll be right back so we can finish this face. We browed. Ah, oh, I just clipped my finger in concealer. Now we have finished our eyes and our brows. Our skin is looking a little bit meh. So let's fix that. The bronzer I'm going to use is the Urban Decay Beached Bronzer in the shade Bronze. We're going to use our new Smith 139 brush. This is a really nice, dense, thick, domed brush. And I'm sure it's for powder. I'm sure of it. I bend the PR leaflet with it, but I'm sure I saw Sam use this for powder, so we're going to do that. And I'm going to get a little bit of that bronzer, and we're just going to start at the back. And I think I'm going to do a not nude lip. I think so. So I'm not going to go ham with the skin. I'm going to keep it pretty natural. I'm just going to warm it up in a natural way. So I'm just bronzing up my forehead. Excuse my hair, I really need to wash it, but I could never be bothered. <laughs> I'm going to pause it there and grab my tartiest go to go. And I'm going to take this shade here, chisel, and I'm going to contour just a little bit. And I moved on to my Smith 118 brush. Just add a little bit more depth at the back there. Do my little nose contour that's like the laziest nose contour in the world. But it bloody works. Good, so we're looking bronze, but we need to highlight now. So I'm going to go back in with my Laura Geller Gilded Honey. And I'm going to use... Lux Powder Fusion Brush from Zoeva. This is the 134 brush. It's basically like a big eyeshadow brush, but it is absolutely perfect for buffing a highlight into the skin. It's it's amazing. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to bring it right onto the cheekbone. And then I'm going to put a little touch just on the forehead to add that sheen to the skin. I'm just going to take a little soft crease brush from Zoeva and get a little bit of this highlight and highlight my cupid's bow the tip of my nose and then the bridge. I'm going to use a nude but I'm not going to use a usual nude, I'm using a, n a new nude. So I'm just sharpening up my pencil. I'm going to use an Urban Decay lip liner. These are my favourite lip liners in the entire world, I've finally decided. I'm going to line my lips with 1993 it's called, which is my birth year. Coincidence, it's amazing and gorgeous. I think not. So I'm going to line my lips. The liquid lipstick I'm going to go in with is from Bleach London and this is the shade Bleached. I'll show you on my hand before I put it on. It is a really cool and gorgeous nude. And I was really excited about these products. I actually totally forgot I had these lipsticks. Oh yes. That is cool as anything. It's like a really nice warm brown nude. My pigments are crazy. Mm-mm. And then honestly, the only thing I would do after my little freckle is I would apply bottom mascara like three more times. So you guys, that is the finished look. I hope you really liked it. I just wanted to do something fun, a little bit more festive, get into the spirit, you know, season's greetings. I hope you liked it and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!